Hi friend, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about scotch locks. I'm gonna talk about solder sleeves. I get some scotch locks too. Scotch locks, sounds like I'm eating a snack. Solder sleeves and the good old favorite, the soldering iron. When it comes to fixing pixels in your display, these are really the three most popular options that I see out there. I see people doing and I've used all three of them um, and if you're repairing a pixel or making an extension cord for your pixels or doing something else it's really important that when you repair it you want to be at the best intersection of two roads right you want it to be fairly simple to do but you also want it to last and you want it to work well because what's the point of fixing it if you're gonna have to go back and fix it again later. So in this video I'm going to show you all three types with a pixel, how to repair and uh, splice in a pixel with all three, give you the pros and cons, and let you know my thoughts by the end of this video. Now if you're new here, before we get to the desktop view, I want you to subscribe here to Learn Christmas Lighting. Don't want you to miss a thing coming up because we've got so much exciting stuff this year, and then I will see you on the soldering table. All right, so first and foremost, we're gonna work with soldering. And you can see here, even though this camera shot's quite close, I've got a lot of tools to make soldering happen. Not that it's bad, it's just the reality of the situation. So I've literally got here solder, soldering iron, wire strippers, of course. We're gonna need these for a lot of these, but actually not all of them. And then heat shrink, I've got a whole bunch of sizes there. And I'm gonna need all these tools because I'm going to have to go ahead and to just to show you how to repair something. Let's say right in here I've got to repair this these uh, old 5 volt pixels from a few years ago. So I'm first going to have to go say they were cut apart. Give it a big cut there. Perfect. Then I'm going to need to make sure I know which way the wire goes. Okay. This is the input side. Input, output. This one, of course, I was just looking at it, so I should know, but our, our input, output. And so now I'm ready to consider thinking about soldering. So in order to get this accomplished, I first got to go ahead, and you can see maybe why I'm not such a big fan of this. I got to strip my wires on both sides. Thankfully, this Irwin uh, multi stripper really most of the time makes it easy. You still got to separate the wires sometimes though. So now I can strip all these. Probably someone is going to watch this and be a better soldering tech than I and tell me how bad of a job I'm doing, but until then, I'm going to carry on. Awesome, we can work with that. And so now once I've got the wires stripped, the next thing we can do, of course, is tin them so we get Good old solder out. We'll take each wire to the soldering iron, heat the wire up, make sure the wire's hot and good before applying solder. Because the worst thing you can do with soldering is uh, not have the metal itself heated up and just heat up the solder and it just kind of flops on top, but it doesn't make the connection that it should. So now I've tinned those guys. Now we'll go get the other side. Break them apart. I'm trying to keep the wire nice and straight while I do that. So far, so good. Now I'm actually thinking ahead to heat shrink, and I'm remembering that I need yet another tool. I need scissors. So go ahead and grab those. Um, for anything that's outdoor, such as Christmas lights, I like adhesive lined heat shrink. Um, I'm currently out right now, so I'm, what it basically just has is some glue in it to keep the water out. Um, like I said, I'm out right now, so I'm just going to use the regular stuff. And uh, this yellow color seems to be about the right size for most pixel things. I'll cut some pieces. I had pre cut pieces instead of a roll. 
So I'll cut some pieces down. Then I will go ahead and do my first wire. I do happen to like the colored wiring um, when soldering because it makes it very easy to see what you need. We may end up with another tool by the end of this actually. So hold these guys together. Of course this is so stinking short that I'm not sure. This is going to work well. Just another reason why um, you should not buy your LEDs from eBay, your pixels. Because as you can see there, I couldn't get that heat shrink on without, I couldn't solder it without melting that heat shrink, and so now I can't even use it. I'm going to have to electrical tape that. Um, and the reason why you don't want to buy them off Amazon is because they shorten the wire between pixels to hit a certain price point. Yeah, heat shrink's not going to work on any of these, I can tell already. I don't have enough space. Um, they shorten the wire between them so that they um, can hit a better price point, and that makes it not good for this hobby. So keep that in mind. So then I'm going to solder them all up, heat shrink them on, hit them with the heat gun to shrink it. I'm not even going to do that now because, truth be told, it's just frustrating and long. I mean, look at how much time this took to get them soldered and sure you know like I, I did here where I put this JST plug on these pixels some time ago um, soldering makes a great solid small connection you know it's I, uh, soldering is a good connection but at the same time it, it just takes so long there's got to be a better way so enter method number two the solder sleeve these got real popular a few years ago. Uh, these little connectors, they look like these. These are the Amazon ones, the DePepis. I'll link to them there. Who knows, they might change their mind as to what brand they sell you know, over time. And, um, you know, they're good. They work. Let me show you how they work. So these guys just require a simple heat gun. This is the Cheap Harbor Freight one. Um, many other options available. And all you do, this is really cool, is you go ahead, you strip your wires. Okay, so we'll do that. I'll get three of these out. You go ahead, you strip your wires, and um, you don't pretend them or anything like that. It's going to do that for you. So I've clearly shoved these wires into some terminal blocks. And so you grab a pixel, you strip the wires. Let's see, that's data coming in. So I need to find a pixel data going out that's snipped, such as this one right here. Perfect. And then I'm just going to go ahead and strip this wire as well. I can see, I can show you already too that. I mean, just the difference between these pixels from a Christmas light vendor that I have in my, my wire stripper right now, the difference in the quality of the wire, how easy it was to strip, was pretty huge over those, those Amazon ones. Don't buy Amazon pixels. Okay. Then look how simple this is to make it happen. So I grab one of my solder sleeves. I go ahead, I find the proper wire, so let's do... Let's do words first. And you go ahead and you want to light up the two sides of the wire. This is really the, the important part. Um, what they want you to do, if you can, if you have enough wire, is actually shove this sleeve over one of the wires all the way. I was getting ahead of myself there, which it looks like I have just barely enough to do. And then take the other one and actually go ahead and twist the wires together the best you can just to to kind of give them a good connection um truth be told i've had mis mixed success with actually being able to do this depending on how much wire i strip and how much space i've got to work with but usually if you finagle with it for a minute you can get it going and really i'm pretty sure all that does is just kind of hold it together while it solders which is going to happen in a second with the heat gun and so, 
let's take a step back, kind of put them together, and then talk about what's going to happen next. So next we put these guys together in the middle of that solder sleeve where it's silver. See that? It's nice and silver there. Okay. That's where we're aiming for. Hopefully it'll focus. Yeah. Right in that silver spot is where we put them. Sorry, there's another wire on top. The red is that adhesive lined heat shrink where it blocks out the water at the point of that red. Hello, camera. And so this is the solder in the middle. This is secondary. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down on my work surface, aka my desk, which I'm going to try to set on fire here. Bring in the heat gun and heat it up. Okay, so now it's done. So what you saw there, if you looked closely, is that first I really held it in that center point because you want to see that solder liquefy, you want to see it melt, and you want to make sure, just like when you're actually soldering with a soldering iron, you want to make sure that that metal of the wire is also hard enough to accept that solder, okay? And then once I held it there and liquefied it for a minute, I went ahead and hit these guys, made sure they melted good. But then I went back and held it on that middle again. And I really think that as much as you can do that, I would go ahead and, and do that when joining wires together. Because it gives you that assurance that you know now that those wires were hot enough that that solder actually sticks to them. I think when people talk about having problems with these, I think that's the big problem is they go over it kind of quick, especially if you're outside and these things are at 30 degrees. You know, right now they're probably at 70 in here, this wire is, but if it's at 30 degrees Fahrenheit, um, you know, it's going to take a while to heat that guy up and, and that's really what it comes down to to make a good connection. So overall, you know, these are good. Um, they're simple. Truth be told, they're not my favorite. My favorite is the number three, the Scotch Lock coming up next telecommunication industry's best friend to us um, but for thicker wires um, for areas where it's tight to be able to fit them like the permanent lights I put on my house um, th these are great and these are a great option I got nothing against them I can see why they're popular but even faster we look at the timer just doing this one wire took a couple minutes even faster than that is the scotch locks so let us bring in all hail the mighty scotch locks and so say for a minute, let me find a pixel or two. I'm just going to cut one off here. So say for a minute we have some scotch locks. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab this pixel here and this connector. Let's pretend we're fix changing the last pixel out, okay? And I've got some scotch locks here. 3M, UR2. Don't mess with any other brands. They, they're smaller even the Klein ones. Don't accept as, as big wire. Grab a couple of those. I'm gonna grab my Scotch Lock pliers. These aren't really special, but they do have a nice wire cutter in them, as well as the jaw that accepts the Scotch Lock really well. Once we've got that, we go ahead. Say we're gonna make our connection right here. So this is what we're gonna replace. We're cutting this out right here. And then, oh, I went and I got a new pixel. Now I'm going to replace them. So I'll spread my wires apart. Again, still got the one tool that I need. I only need one tool, and it's in my hand the whole time. Okay, who can argue with that? Got my wires separate. Now I go ahead, say, okay, find my wires. Okay, here's my, my black line first. We'll match that up. There's three holes in these UR2s. Um, does not matter which ones you use. All that happens on the back end is that there's these stabbies that go through them and they stab them. So you want to make sure that the wire pushes through fully. Sometimes it gets a little caught up on that stabby. You got to watch that out. So then I'll go ahead and put them into the plier. I, I give them a little pressure if I can so that it holds the wire in and then I push them. Okay. Push them really good. I've had times where I've had an intermittent issue when I was first using these, and um, it, it just wasn't quite pushed down all the way. What you should see, and you probably saw there, is this goop, this dialectic grease comes out. 
This is good because that grease that popped out is what waterproofs your connection. And if you've got wires in this, even if you don't, there's extra grease in there. It's going to come out and it's good because now it's insulating that the whole way up. And so you could see it just took a minute. I could do one, then I could do two, then I could do three, punch them all down, be good to go. Um, the only thing that I don't love about scotch locks is you don't want to be rough with them. So I do appreciate that, like, say I need to measure voltage. I can actually get my multimeter, my electrical meters probe in an empty hole there and, and read a voltage off of there. But let's just say I'm being rough with these. I could, in theory, rip them out again, okay? And then that's compromised. It actually stripped the wire. Um, and so that's my only, like, thought with scotch locks that makes them not quite perfect is just totally, like, if your kids are, I mean, nobody should be using your, your pixels. Nobody should be roughhousing with them. But you just want to be gentle. Don't yank on stuff. You know, do I use scotch locks to make extension cords for my pixels? Um, you know, if I need to go 5, 10 feet? Sometimes. Should I? Probably not. I probably should solder them. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, they really get the job done well. They're easy. And you can see how it can save you time. Uh, save you frustration and help make a great display for you this year. So if you have liked this, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you grab my free guide, three things you need to know before you begin your first Christmas light display. It's over at learnchristmaslighting.com and I will see you in our next video. Thanks.